you know, there was this, another notion of 20th century central banking uh, was that the ideal central bank was independent of the political system. So you wanted central bankers who were appointed for long terms and not subject to parliamentary or congressional removal to be independent of the political system. I think one of the things that we've learned in the crisis is that might be an impossibility, that it is part of the democratic decision-making process, which is, for better or worse, politics. In the end of the 20th century, macroeconomic monetary policy had settled on the idea that the one and only role of the central bank is to, keep, is to maintain price stability. Inflation targeting sort of spread from central bank to central bank around the world over the course of about 10 or 15 years, and everything else fell by the wayside. This was the job, and the only job, of a central bank. The lesson of the crisis is that a central bank really has to have other things in mind as well, whether things are going on in the financial system which might create credit bubbles, might create risks which could lead to a crisis. Effective macroprudential macroeconomic regulation will have central banks thinking about these things and perhaps responding to them. That said, in principle, the question is, can central banks begin to look at a broader range of indicators and really interpret them well enough to respond to them? And that relates to the other sort of pillar of macroprudential regulation, which is regulating the activities of specific institutions, markets, uh, specific things that banks might do, specific things that other financial institutions might do when they have macro-systemic implications. In the end of the 20th century, we moved away from that. We moved away from very specific regulation because it's a, who are we to know? Let the banks maximize their profits and be innovative It's for the best of society. And the emphasis was simply on capital regulation. As long as there's capital adequacy, let them do whatever they want. Even the playing field between banks and, and investment banks and other kinds of financial institutions, let every bank be a universal bank. As long as there's adequate capital, we don't really mind what they do. A lesson of the crisis was, gee, maybe we should be paying more attention to some of the specific things that we're doing. And so there's a turn back to very specific regulatory activities. Question is whether regulators are going to be sharp enough to respond to new developments in the financial system, to, to respond to new areas, new businesses, new instruments uh, where risks emerge proactively to prevent those risks from becoming systemic. In the United States, we've introduced this Dodd-Frank legislation, which goes on for over 800 pages, which does has some very good things, has some not so good things, but does put in place the, the ability to respond to both macroeconomic and sort of, uh, you know, for business-specific systemic risks. So we have an institutional structure to address these things for the first time. The real issue is that the, is that the devil is in the details. Will that institutional structure be able to do so in a political environment, in an environment where bank lobbyists can be very strong? Will they be able to do so? We'll see how well they do over the next, in the future.